what is the most commonly used word in association with the euro? No, it's not failure, though it could be. No, it's stability, isn't it? A decade ago, everybody said, once we've got the euro currency, it will bring us stability. Well, I would suggest a decade on, what it has bought is chaos, discord and misery for millions. What's happened in the last week marks the beginning of the end. The markets are saying it already. Italian government bonds now yield 1% more than German or French issued government bonds. The markets are saying that economic and monetary union will not last. And I'm not surprised because it never was an optimal currency zone. One interest rate could never fit all these different countries and you've never had proper public support. The Eurozone has never been tested, but it's about to be. Spain's in economic trouble. Italy, as German economists at the time said, should never have joined the Euro. But the situation in Greece, I think, is where we should focus our attention. Thousands of young people out on the streets demonstrating, demanding their government does something. But the Greek government is stuck inside the Euro straitjacket. There's nothing they can do, there's nothing a future general election can do in Greece to change anything. And when people have taken away from them the ability through the ballot box to determine their own futures, then I'm afraid that violence becomes the only logical alternative. What you've done with this Euro is you have trapped people in an economic prison. You've trapped people in a Volkerkerker from which to get out from which to get out. It will take great courage, it will take leadership or possibly the inevitable economic meltdown. And jeer on if you like. But have you noticed that on the bond markets this morning, Greek bonds are trading 233 basis points higher than German bonds? Now I know that most of you in this room won't even know what that means and those that do will do your best to ignore it. You can go on if you want, burying your heads in the sand. You can ignore the markets if you want to, but in time, the markets will not ignore you. Whilst 60 years ago, an iron curtain fell across Europe, today we have the iron fist of the European Commission, and we've seen it with Article 121, and with Greece effectively being turned into a protectorate. Poor Greece, trapped inside the economic prison of the Euro. In 1968, we had the Brezhnev Doctrine of Limited Sovereignty. Today, we have shared values. We have ever closer European Union and pooled sovereignty, and that is what you've used. But of course, it won't just be Greece, because the same is going to happen to Spain, to Portugal and to Ireland, one two, one will be invoked with all of those. Mr Barroso, you said earlier we will stick to our course and that means millions of people in Europe will be put through pain as you attempt to keep together this disastrous project that is the Euro. It will fall to pieces, of that there can be no doubt. And now we have the situation in Ireland. Now I know that the stupidity and greed of Irish politicians has a lot to do with this. They should never ever have joined the Euro. They suffered with low interest rates, a false boom and a massive bust. But look at your response to them. What they're being told, as their government's collapsing, is that it would be inappropriate for them to have a general election. In fact, Commissioner Wren here said they had to agree their budget first before they'd be allowed to have a general election. Just who the hell do you think you people are? And yet the word stability still being used this morning. Mr Barroso used it. Mr Van Rompuy used it. Stability. In fact, we're patting ourselves on the back that the bond auctions in Portugal went well last week when the reality is it was the European Central Bank actually using taxpayers' money to buy their own debt. Your reassurances that all is well don't work 
I mean, who do you think you're kidding, Mr. Van Rompuy? Bond yields in Portugal rose to 97% yesterday. The public right across the Union no longer support the currency, and the battle for Spain hasn't even begun. The model itself is failing, and yet what you want is to double the size of the bailout fund. You even want to increase the scope of the bailout fund so that along with the ECB, you too can go on buying yet more of your own debt. You're using the crisis as a massive power grab to take us towards fiscal union. If you succeed, then we should change the name. Get rid of European Union, call it the debt union. You are very, very dangerous people indeed. Your obsession with creating this Euro state means that you're happy to destroy democracy. You appear to be happy for millions and millions of people to be unemployed and to be poor. Untold millions must suffer so that your Euro dream can continue. Well, it won't work because it's Portugal next. With their debt levels of 325% of GDP, they're the next ones on the list. And after that, I suspect it'll be Spain. And the bailout for Spain would be seven times the size of Ireland. And at that moment, all of the bailout money has gone. There won't be any more. But it's even more serious than economics. Because if you rob people of their identity, if you rob them of their democracy, then all they are left with is nationalism and violence. I can only hope and pray that the Euro project is destroyed by the markets before that really happens. Now, what you should be discussing at your summit on Friday is Portugal. Because after the bailouts in Greece and Ireland, it's pretty obvious the markets are sending you all a message. Come in, number three, your time is up. Portuguese bond yields on Monday hit 7.6%. You know that yourself. Uh, it was only at 7%, of course, when it got there that Ireland had to be bailed out. We've also got, in April, a massive rollover of Portuguese debt. Another 20 billion that has to be rolled over. Remind ourselves, in the last six months, 80% of Portuguese debt was brought up, purchased by the European Central Bank. We cannot go on, as a European Union, buying our own debt. If we do, the next debt crisis won't be a country, but it will be a debt crisis of the European Central Bank itself. We've reached a point with this where actually it doesn't matter what any of you say, nobody believes you, the public don't support you, I hope and pray the markets break you. 2010 will be remembered as the year when the flaws, the deep flaws in the Euro project were exposed and when the public in Europe woke up to the sheer stupidity of their leaders. And so here we have another summit, another crisis, confidence in the euro ebbing by the week. It's like watching a slow motion car crash. And now you want a permanent bailout mechanism. But I think the last week is going to prove to be the watershed moment for this entire European project. You see, the only way to stop countries acting in their own national interest is to take that power away from them. To form a treasury department there in Frankfurt that has power over tax and power over government spending and indeed I've heard some of the EU extremists this afternoon effectively call for that. But you've come back to us today and now with the approval of Mr Sarkozy and Angela Merkel you're the head of a new economic government for 500 million people and you've launched your 10-year plan, your wish list and I just wonder have you remembered what happened to the last 10-year plan that was launched in 2000 it was, it was launched in this parliament to much acclaim. It was a total and utter crippling failure even before the global recession hit. And in fact, all centralised EU plans fail. Just look at the disastrous, ruinous common fisheries policy. And now your beloved euro has failed. It's failed politically at its first major hurdle. You weren't able to come up with a plan at that summit. You can't bail out Greece without the International Monetary Fund coming in to save, at least for the moment, your Euro dream. And yet, Mr Van Rompuy, your plan seems to be, we're, we're losing, we're failing, let's have more of the same. 
let us have more Europe, let us have more failure. But it must be one thing or the other. It is either a full EU state that controls everything, or it is disintegration and back to national control. Well, President Barroso, you are certainly flexing your muscles using the powers given to you by the Lisbon Treaty, which you push through using illegitimate means. You now do everything you can on the world stage and within the EU to acquire all the attributes of statehood. And nowhere could that be more apparent than in your recent proposal for a direct tax to be levied by the European institutions on the peoples of this continent. Of course, in previous times, there was a very successful independence movement that campaigned on the slogan of no taxation without representation. And you certainly, sir, are not a representative. We haven't voted for you and we can't remove you. So I think with this direct tax, you actually made a mistake. Because what this euro is all about, it's about a political class imposing its will upon the peoples of Europe. Remember, only two countries had a referendum on the euro, Denmark and Sweden, and both of them said no. What we have before us here is the new government of Europe, a government that with the Lisbon Treaty now has enormous powers, not just a foreign minister and embassies, not just the ability to sign treaties, but the ability now to use emergency powers to literally take countries over. And yet what we've heard from the European Parliament big group leaders this morning is the demand that you take even more powers and do it even more quickly. And perhaps it's worth reminding ourselves that this treaty that gives this Commission these powers does not have democratic legitimacy in the European Union at all. You ignored referendums, you denied referendums and you bullied the poor Irish into voting for a second time. Now I'm struck that the common denominator with this Commission is the sheer number of them that were communists or were very close to communism. Mr. Barroso himself was a Maoist. Sim, Sim Callas, far from being a student activist, was even a member of the Supreme Soviet. So a top-notch communist we have there. We have at least ten communists in this commission and it must feel like a return to the good old days. There must be a certain nostalgia amongst the communists. Do enjoy the 10th birthday of the Euro because I very much doubt you will be celebrating the 20th. What we have seen this morning has been reminiscent of the old Soviet times. Do you remember when the five year plans were announced to be successes often before they were even launched with much talk of record harvests and wonderful production figures for tractors? And I suppose much like those days we have been treated this morning to, an, to a succession of unelected ageing bureaucrats telling us what a great success the whole thing's been. It's all delusional stuff. Just look around this chamber this morning. Just look at these faces. Look at the fear. Look at the anger. Paul Barroso here looks like he's seen a ghost. You know, they're beginning to understand that the game is up. And yet, in their desperation to preserve their dream, they want to remove any remaining traces of democracy from the system. And it's pretty clear that none of you have learned anything you know, when you yourself, Mr. Van Rompuy, say that the Euro has brought us stability, I suppose I could applaud you for having a sense of humour, but isn't this really just the bunker mentality? We need democratic solutions to this. If you go on pushing your extreme Euro nationalism, this will lead to violence. Right across every member state in this union, and perhaps this is why we see the fear in the faces, Increasingly people are saying, we don't want that flag, we don't want the anthem, we don't want this political class, we want the whole thing consigned to the dustbin of history. We must put the future of Europe to people in every member state in free and fair referendums.